The deterioration in Saudi-Nigerian relations is the result of a sudden and unexpected action by Saudi authorities that directly impacted Nigerians. The Nigerian government quickly sought an explanation from their Saudi counterparts, hoping to resolve the issue diplomatically. However, Saudi Arabia's response was opaque, providing little insight into the situation. This ambiguity heightened tensions, creating an atmosphere reminiscent of a cold war between the two countries. Concerns have been raised about a potential shift in Saudi policy as a result of the ambiguity surrounding Saudi Arabia's actions against Nigerians. Targeting Nigerian individuals or groups could lead to a deeper conflict between the two countries. A policy like this could exacerbate diplomatic tensions, leading to more misunderstandings, retaliation, and eventually, a full-fledged escalation of hostilities. The absence of a clear explanation from Saudi Arabia strains bilateral relations while also raising broader concerns about international diplomacy and the treatment of foreign nationals. In this video, let's find out how Saudi Arabia did the unthinkable to Nigerians, causing nationwide grievances. When 177 Nigerian nationals were denied entry into Saudi Arabia upon arrival, tensions between Saudi Arabia and Nigeria erupted. Only 87 of the 264 passengers on an airpiece flight to Jeddah were allowed to enter, while the rest had their visas revoked and were deported. This incident occurred while Nigerian President Bola Tinubu was in Saudi Arabia for bilateral talks, implying an underlying conflict between the two countries. Saudi law mandates that every female pilgrim under the age of 45 must have a legal status. A male sponsor during the pilgrimage, regardless of nationality. Hadim bin Hassan Kadi, the spokesman for the pilgrimage ministry, clarified that this rule applies to all women seeking an entry visa to Saudi Arabia for Hajj. Binta Malami, another woman in the group, revealed that she traveled with her husband but was denied entry to Saudi Arabia due to a discrepancy in her husband's name compared to her passport. In protest of what he deemed inhumane treatment, her husband chose to return with her. The denied passengers had not met entry requirements or provided accurate information for their visas, according to Saudi authorities. This incident, which occurred during the Nigerian president's visit, was perceived as a diplomatic blunder. Saudi officials' lack of sensitivity sparked public outrage, with many calling it an embarrassment and a significant blow to bilateral relations. Concerns about visa cancellations remain, especially given Nigeria's efforts to resolve visa entry challenges in the region, including the UAE's ongoing year-long visa ban. This incident is reminiscent of previous instances of entry refusal in Saudi Arabia, most notably in 2012, when over 1,000 Nigerian female pilgrims were deported for failing to meet visa requirements for the Hajj pilgrimage. Saudi authorities have rejected claims of mistreatment, stating that they will welcome pilgrims in accordance with regulations. Nigeria initiated the repatriation of its citizens following discussions between Nigerian and Saudi officials led by Speaker Al-Haji Aminu Tambuwal. Nigerian clerics assisting the stranded women explained their compliance with travel requirements, pointing out a flaw in the airport's checking system that resulted in their denial of entry. While Nigeria aims to prevent similar incidents and emphasizes its partnership with Saudi Arabia, it is important to note that the UAE has kept its visa ban on Nigerian travelers in place. The UAE's visa restrictions, imposed without explanation, hampered travel for Nigerian nationals, affecting flights and investment opportunities. Despite earlier optimism, conflicting statements from Nigerian and UAE officials have prolonged the visa ban affecting the significant flow of investment and travel between the countries. The recent visa cancellations in Saudi Arabia follow a troubling pattern, with 177 passengers having their visas revoked upon arrival, echoing previous visa ban issues with the UAE. This incident complicates travel and investment prospects for Nigerians in the region, compounding the difficulties faced by Nigerian travelers seeking access to the Middle East. The Saudi embassy's statement on the denial of entry to Nigerian passengers lacked clarity on who determines entry conditions and how frequently they change, raising concerns about selective application. Allegations that passengers provided incorrect information for visas appeared implausible, 
given that the airline, Airpiece, confirmed strict adherence to established protocols and Saudi authorities' validation processes. Despite extensive pre-checks and confirmations, Saudi authorities failed to explain the sudden visa cancellations upon arrival in Jeddah, prompting ongoing collaboration between Airpiece and Saudi officials to resolve the issue. While 18 of the 177 denied passengers had prior offenses that resulted in a complete ban from Saudi Arabia, no explanations were provided for the remaining 159 visa cancellations. Recognizing Saudi Arabia's sovereignty over entry, the Nigerian government emphasized their long-term partnership and joint investigations to prevent future incidents. Both countries sought to resolve the situation amicably, urging affected passengers to be patient during ongoing investigations in order to maintain their strategic partnership. Although the Saudi embassy clarified that the deportations were not targeted at Nigerians, valid reasons for the visa cancellations remained unknown by Saudi authorities. The Saudi embassy clarified that passengers denied entry and later deported had given incorrect information in order to obtain inappropriate visa categories, a practice that was not limited to Nigerians. While Saudi Arabia issued precautionary measures for visitors, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs acknowledged an investigation into possible violations of consular or aviation rules, promising preventive measures consistent with President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's strategy. Except for 18 passengers barred due to previous offenses, Saudi authorities have not provided reasons for visa cancellations. Speculation surrounds the impact of this incident on Nigeria's major carrier, Airpiece, which may be attempting to deter its operations to Saudi Arabia, despite high load factors since its inception. This incident occurred while Nigerian President Tanubu was attending a Saudi Africa summit, where he advocated for Saudi investment in Nigeria and affirmed investment security. Despite a preliminary agreement between the two OPEC countries, the actual economic impact is unknown. Both countries expressed a desire to strengthen partnerships, particularly in the oil and gas sector, recognizing the need for increased technological exchange and investment inflows. Despite discussions, economic involvement between Nigeria and Saudi Arabia has remained limited. According to researcher Benjamin Oj, despite initiatives such as the Nigeria-Saudi Chamber of Commerce established a year ago. The skepticism surrounding the energy agreement suggests concerns about its practical implementation, with fears that it may exist only as a gesture rather than a tangible development. However, as Nigeria seeks to strengthen economic ties, the recent visa cancellation incident has strained diplomatic relations between the two countries. This unexpected turn has clouded the prospects for improved relations, casting doubt on the course of their diplomatic engagement. Nigeria's commitment to fostering relations with Saudi Arabia contrasts with the kingdom's ambiguity, which has been exacerbated by distressing reports from Jeddah. There is speculation that the visa cancellations were done on purpose to discourage the Nigerian airline that is now flying to Saudi Arabia. This unsettling situation suggests underlying motives that undermine efforts to establish strong economic and diplomatic ties between the two countries. The arrival of the airpiece flight from Kano was expected to be a pilgrimage and exploration journey, but it quickly devolved into a bureaucratic nightmare upon landing. Airpiece, taken aback by the unexpected turn of events, vehemently denied any involvement in the visa debacle, claiming strict adherence to pre-departure protocols. They described their meticulous verification procedure, emphasizing the use of the advanced passenger processing system, which allegedly approved each visa, ensuring a trouble-free journey for the passengers. The stark contrast between pre-approved visas and the invalidated status presented by Saudi authorities upon arrival, on the other hand, caused chaos and confusion among passengers. When faced with the prospect of a mass return flight to Nigeria, the situation threatened to leave all 264 people stranded, adding to the chaos and uncertainty surrounding their unexpected situation. Fortunately, this extreme measure was not implemented. Airpiece was able to secure entry for 87 passengers through painstaking negotiations, leaving 177 others facing an uncertain future. The reasoning behind this visa upheaval remains a mystery. The cancellations, according to Saudi authorities, were caused by incorrect information provided by passengers, 
though specifics remain elusive. This hazy explanation adds to the frustration and casts doubt. Airpiece, understandably, denies any responsibility, citing their adherence to procedures and the Saudi authorities' lack of prior notification. The news erupted like a volcanic eruption in Nigeria. The social media uproar over the invalidated visas quickly spread beyond online platforms, sparking national debate. Outraged citizens demanded that the government intervene and conduct a thorough investigation into the incident, amplifying calls for accountability and transparency. In response, the House of Representatives launched an investigation to find answers and potentially establish mechanisms for holding those responsible for the ordeal accountable. Beyond the immediate impact on the passengers involved, the incident's ramifications are far-reaching. It deviates from the established travel route between Nigeria and Saudi Arabia, which is well known for religious pilgrimages and business ventures. This disruption not only erodes existing trust, but also threatens to erode it further, potentially impeding future travel and economic exchanges between the two countries. The sudden visa cancellations that occurred while Nigeria's president was in Saudi Arabia indicate a diplomatic strain, which adds another layer of complication to the situation. The Nigerian president's desire to sanction and potentially invade Niger in the aftermath of the coup coincides with his encouragement of ECOWAS's participation, positioning himself as a central figure in the unfolding events. The alliance of Niger with Russia, a strategic ally of Saudi Arabia, complicates the situation. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's push for ECOWAS to approve a military intervention in Niger as evidenced by his request for military involvement to the Nigerian parliament, puts him at the forefront of this scenario. As discussions revolve around the possibility of reversing Niger's coup and restoring Mohamed Bazoum as president, questions about the underlying motivations and who stands to benefit the most from such actions arise. The geopolitical alliances and strategic interests of the countries involved, including Nigeria, Niger, Russia, and Saudi Arabia, intertwine within this complex web of diplomatic and military considerations, raising concerns about regional stability and power dynamics in Africa. The potential benefits of reversing the Niger coup and restoring Bazoum, which appear to favor France and Western interests, position Manchuria's president as a direct Western ally willing to jeopardize relationships with fellow African nations. This alignment highlights a geopolitical strategy that could serve Western agendas, especially given France's historical ties to its former African colonies. However, the formation of a new bloc led by Russia and China, which includes Saudi Arabia, represents a shift in global alliances. Non-Western-aligned countries are given preference, indicating a shift away from traditional Western dependencies. The current situation in Nigeria suggests a nuanced political landscape in which the president's pro-Western stance contrasts with the country's broader sentiment. The cancellation of visas despite the presence of the Nigerian president in Saudi Arabia raises concerns about Saudi Arabia's potential diplomatic maneuvering, which could be aimed at signaling displeasure or exerting pressure on the Nigerian government. This complex interplay of geopolitical interests emphasizes the changing dynamics of global alliances, challenging traditional Western dominance while reshaping power structures in Africa and beyond. The sudden cancellation of the Nigerian president's visa while he was in Saudi Arabia appears to have diplomatic implications, possibly stemming from Manchuria's stated intentions to sanction Niger and align with Russia. This move could be interpreted as diplomatic retaliation or as a rejection of Manchuria's geopolitical stance. The possibility of canceling visas for Saudi citizens entering Nigeria in response to this incident raises concerns about potential retaliatory actions and the escalation of tensions between the two countries. Let us know in the comments section right below how Nigeria should respond to this. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching and until the next video, stay tuned.